hepatocavoatrial confluence resection without extracorporeal circulation to treat a third colorectal metastasis recurrence involving right atrium. The case is about a 71-year-old female patient who underwent laparoscopic resection and adjuvant chemotherapy for adenocarcinoma of the retrosigmoid junction in the April of 2014. Two years later, two metastases, respectively, at the segment 7 and 4A were treated with a liver tunnel and postoperative chemotherapy. In February 2017, another metastasis appeared at the hepatocaval confluence between the middle and right hepatic veins. This lesion was treated with parenchyma sparing surgery and reconstruction of the right and middle hepatic veins. One year later, a solid lesion appeared, originating from IVC wall and protruding inside the right atrium. After eight cycles of chemotherapy, a PET scan documented the stability of the disease. According to the better survival results with surgical treatment compared to third-line chemotherapy, the patient was evaluated for another surgical treatment. The solid lesion 3.5 cm long originating from the IVC wall caused a significant obstruction of the right hepatic vein outflow, while the common trunk was not involved. A 3D model of a patient's anatomy was obtained facilitating an accurate surgical planning. Every precaution was used to reduce the liver ischemia time and to avoid the use of extracorporeal circulation, considered a risk factor for complication and diffusion of neoplastic cells. First preliminary step was to modify an IVC homograft by suturing the right liac vein onto the ipsilateral renal vein in order to reduce the liver ischemia time. After a J-shaped thoracoabdominal incision, a long time was required to separate liver from the surrounding structures and from the IVC. Diaphragmatic section and sternotomy were required to access the suprapotic portion of the IVC up to the atrium. Once the suprapotic IVC was exposed, a complete control of the structure was obtained. Pulling the liver downward and encircling the suprahepatic IVC caused thrombus displacement. Transesophageal ultrasound documented the disappearance of the lesion from the atrium. This confirmed the possibility to remove the lesion without hurt involvement. The liver section line had to include common trunk and right hepatic vein to allow radical margins. The dissection was obtained by Kelly-Clasia and bipolar forceps with intermittent Pringle maneuver. The right hepatic vein was isolated and sectioned. The venous graft was prepared for the anastomosis. Clamping the hepatic hilum was possible to safely dissect the hepatocaval confluence up to the common trunk, maintaining the flow into the IVC. Common trunk was clamped and sectioned with complete vascular exclusion of the liver, preserving the caval flow. The transposed iliac vein of caval graft was sutured to the stump of common trunk. The anastomosis was performed with M2M5 proline running suture. In order to remove the metastasis with caval portion involved, was necessary to exclude the IVC from the cavoatrial junction to a few centimeters below the hepatocaval confluence. Visualization of the thrombus permitted the section onto healthy tissue under direct visualization. The IVC portion is then removed and blocked with neoplastic thrombus. The first step in reconstructive phase was proximal caval anastomosis, realized with 4O proline running suture. Despite the absence of venous return from the lower part of the body, 
the patient not required extracorporeal circulation. Once completed the proximal anastomosis, the clamp was opened allowing retrograde filling of the IVC. Immediately afterwards, the hepatic inflow and the venous return to the heart were restored. Distal anastomosis was safely realized with 5O proline running suture. Intraoperative ultrasound documented a good liver perfusion and regular patency of the anastomosis. This is a final view with reconstruction completed. Among the sutures, only the proximal between intrapericardic IVC and graft was realized during caval complete exclusion. It was necessary to reconstruct the diaphragm with direct suturing and with the interposition of a porcine pericardium patch. Surgery duration was 13 hours with 38 minutes of vascular exclusion and extracorporeal circulation was not required. The postoperative curse was regular and the patient was discharged 16 days after surgery. During follow up, complications developed were pleural effusion control with medical therapy, infected fluid collection at the resection site that required percutaneous drainage, and subsegmental pulmonary embolism treated with medical therapy. Resection margins were free, and the metastasis was originated from the caval wall infiltrating surrounding tissues and diaphragm. After 10 months, the patient is in good medical condition. The CT scan reveals an asymptomatic pleural effusion, absence of recurrence and regular patency of the graft.